All right, guys, welcome back in, Sons of the Shoe. And uh, we start this final segment with the Michigan Panic Meter. Nick is going to get on me for moving my Michigan Panic Meter. I know he is. But, guys, like, I, I, I don't trust Ryan Day anymore. Like, in that, in that game, even if Oregon, if, even if Michigan, I keep going back to Oregon. They're just living rent-free in my head, I guess. Um, if Mich- Even if Michigan is not a top-10 team or whatever, by the time that game rolls around, um, t- how do I have any trust that on that stage Ryan Day is going to going to get the job done with his team. So he's got a lot to prove to me in uh, along with this defense, like I alluded to in the first segment, the rest of the way that Penn state game is going to be a massive one. Um, and yeah, like I'm at least a little bit nervous about Michigan now, not be, and here's the thing. I'm not nervous about Michigan because of Michigan. It's nothing Michigan did. It's all just because of what Ohio state does under Ryan day. And I, I don't know if I can trust him in that game at this point. So because of that, I'm in the light gray. This is maybe a little bit too much in the light gray. Like I probably would move it a little bit more to the left. Like I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little too close to white right now, and I don't like that. But that's just the, the graphic. We just kind of did generic versions of the graphic in each sort of, uh, each sort of phase of the the, the panic meter. So that's kind of what we're stuck with right now. I, I, I could shift it a little bit. Maybe I'll work on that for for next next week. But yeah, I'm, I'm in the light gray with it because I just don't know if I can trust the Buckeyes and Ryan Day on that game, in that game, on that stage, come Thanksgiving weekend. Um, Cause I don't even know if I'm going to be able to trust him against Penn state in two weeks. So we'll just have to see. Well, uh, what is your Michigan panic meter at? And we'll see what Nick's is at when he rejoins us, obviously next week leading up to the um, Nebraska game. But in the meantime, guys, we have another edition of uh, four down territory. And we go first to first down. I said, we were going to get to this. Dan Lanning was asked about whether or not he intentionally put 12 men on the field with the 10 seconds left so that the Buckeyes would run a play, they'd kill some clock, and then Ohio State would run out of time to be able to, to do anything. And uh, I, his answer, he tried to be very very political about it, at least it seemed. Um, also, though, kind of admitted to it. And then I think what really admits to it, though, is the smile that he gave. And if you're not watching this, if you're, if you're, doing, if you're listening to the audio version of the show, you won't be able to notice the smile. But uh, – you can find the the video version on the 92 to the fan YouTube channel. Just look at this smile and tell me that this isn't a guy who knows what he was doing. Much of the uh, commentary world has decided and struck you as a genius stand for the 12 man penalty and declared that it was intentional. Uh, was it indeed intentional to induce the throw one on one against Jabbar in that spot? He wasn't one on one. He we actually had a safety on top, so there was a so it's called dog. It's when you play, but he wasn't in an extremely tight coverage. But he was in dog coverage where he had safety on top of him. And uh, yeah, there was a timeout before that. We spent an inordinate amount of time on situations. There's some situations that don't show up very often uh, in college football, but uh, this is one that obviously uh, was something that we we have worked on. So um, you can see the result. By saying at the end that it was something that they worked on, I think that tells you uh, that, yes, he prepared for the situation. And uh, the smile also just tells, tells you everything you need to know. He clearly did it on purpose. It's a loophole in the system. It's why college football is now looking at this rule and deciding what to do with it because it is bullshit. I said it on Saturday night. It is complete and utter bullshit. I'm not going to sit here and say this is why they lost the game. I can't do that. Again, Ryan Day's got to wear his 1-7 and seven record. Figure it out, bud. But, like – it is bullshit that that is a, that you're allowed to put 12 men out there, make some time run off the clock while they run a play, and then you don't reset the clock for the offense. Like it puts the offense at a disadvantage that they shouldn't be when the defense inadvertently did something on purpose. Completely trash that that was even a thing. It took away some of the suspense of that game because I wanted to at least see Ohio State attempt a field goal to try to win it. And who knows, maybe we're talking about a win instead of a loss in this this week. Um, so that was frustrating. And yes, in some ways it did kind of cost them the game, but uh, I'm not putting it on, on, on that. And I also will say this, as we worry about Ryan Day on a daily basis, I don't know that Ryan Day would have been ready for that situation. And that's another reason why I think the jig is up on him because like Dan Lanning sort of going Bill Belichick here, like he practices every situation. I don't know that Ryan Day was, was practicing like, hey, we got to put 12 men on the field to help run the clock. I bet you that was news to him. I bet you he was kind of stunned by that one to even realize that that was a thing because it seemed like his team wasn't even aware that the clock was going to, was going to wind down. Um, and then they weren't going to get the time back. So um, yeah, that's, that's where my trust level was at with Ryan day. All right, we go to second down. This was actually hilarious. USC 
is currently doing something where they offer fans an opportunity to run out of the tunnel with the team before the game for the small fee of $1,800. And this past weekend, this is an absolutely hilarious troll job. A Penn State fan paid the $1,800 to run out of the tunnel with USC. And what's funny about this is he did it because they were like, well, I guess we got to let him do it. He paid the $1,800. Um, and it was such, it was a genius troll move by this Penn State fan. I absolutely love that he did this. Um, and then it forced USC to amend. And you can go to the website where you can where you can pay to do this for this experience. It forced USC to change the rule, where they now say you need to be wearing USC gear in order to be able to participate in the running out of the tunnel. Um, with the, with the team at, at home games. I wonder if somebody will now find the loophole in that, which is they'll show up in USC gear and underneath have like an, an opponent's shirt on or like a hat in the hoodie pocket or something, and they'll pull it out and put it on or take the hoodie off once they get out on the field. Um, maybe just something that they should do away with because people are going to continue to try to exploit this now that this Penn State fan did. But I thought it was hilarious that Penn State trolled them and then went on to win the game on, on top of that. So pretty comical if you ask me, but uh, yeah, I, I like that move. That, that, that was a savvy, savvy move by that Penn State fan. All right, we go to third down. And in third down, we ask the question, if you have the number one pick in next year's draft, and yes, this is kind of, you see this, this helmet behind me over my left shoulder, this Browns helmet. This is because I think the Browns are starting to embrace the fact that they might need to draft a quarterback next year. Who are you taking if you have the number one pick in the draft next year? Um, I think this is a great question because Shadur Sanders is going to be the consensus, I think, quarterback that everyone's gawking at the this year and, and into the offseason and during draft season. But I honestly think, guys, that uh, there's some there's some stuff from Shadur that I'm just not sure is going to translate in terms of like there's some inconsistencies there. And I, I'm not trying to disparage him. I think he's a great player. But I, I, I wonder about like it translating to the NFL, his game. We'll see. But the other part of this, too, is like, I don't know if I would take Shitter Sanders because I don't know what kind of problems his uh, coach prime is going to cause. If you do, he's already talking about how he's trying to steer his kids to certain teams where he knows they can be successful. You think the Browns are going to be one of the teams on that list of, of, of the places that, that he's going to let his kids play in a, in a very like LeVar ball esque type situation. Like I doubt it. So I think there's risk in that in knowing like if you take him, Dion might just force your hand to trade him anyway or whatever. And so I don't know if you want to sign up for that, but I guess if I'm, if Shader is probably going to be the answer, but I actually think Quinn Ewers has done so much the last couple of years where I feel pretty good about the idea that, that I, I think Quinn Ewers is going to translate to the next level. I really do. So I would probably lean Quinn Ewers at this point, but I understand where a lot of people are going to say Shador. Um, All right. Final one, fourth down. And we have an opportunity guys to see, Army Navy go at it in back-to-back weeks the way things are setting up because both are in the American Conference. Both are undefeated right now and leading the conference. So there's a chance that they would play in a conference championship game for the American Conference one week before and then go and play the following week in the Army Navy game um, and do like do basically have a have a double header against each other um, with, with different stakes in each, but um, still sort of the same stakes in a lot of ways. So I, I threw out the idea of like maybe they would just make the Army Navy game the conference championship game and do away with the one the week before. But somebody mentioned to me like when has college football or when has anybody ever turned down free money? Um, so doing the back to back weeks is going to give you a chance to to to, to play the game um, and, and earn some money off of it. I'm also pretty sure that they play that at like the the whoever wins the conference is like home stadium. I don't think there's like a neutral site. They do it. I could be wrong about that. And so that would mean like the game gets played on, on one of these campuses, which I think would actually be really cool because you never get that between these two teams. So I'm actually all for them playing back to back and just letting it be like sort of a, a dog fight in that way where it's like, Hey, one's for the conference championship. One is for the commissioner's trophy. I think that's what it's called or the commandant's trophy. I forget. I should know this. My brother went to Navy. Um, I'm going to look this up. Trophy. This is great. Uh, This is great 
podcasting that you're hearing right now. It's the trophy between the Commander and Chiefs trophy. I knew it was something like that, man. I, I'm sorry. I fucked it up. That's my bad. But, no, I, I, I love Army-Navy, and I will continue to maintain that it's one of the best sports spectacles you can go to. I would recommend it to anybody, anybody who's never been. Go to the Army-Navy game if you ever have the chance. It's awesome. The pageantry, all of it. Um, and so because of that, sign me up for back-to-back army navy matchups maybe one at one of the team's campuses and then one which i think it's in and i think it's land over this year where the commanders play for the commanders and chiefs for the commander and chiefs trophy how about that um i'm i'm all for it it would be i think a cool thing what about you guys how you feel about those four down territory topics are you uh is dan lane is dan lanny now on your your coaches you hate list because he pulled this move um, would you pay to run out of the tunnel with USC and then rip off your gear and, wear, and, and reveal Ohio State stuff if they were on the schedule this year? If you had the number one pick in the draft next year, which quarterback out of college are you taking? And are you are you on board with Army Navy back to back weeks coming up later in the season? All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Another episode of Sons of the Shoot in the books. We'll be back next week as we preview the matchup with Nebraska. It's going to be a big one. That Nebraska team is not one you should take lightly and continue going around the world of college football with Nick Wilson and myself. Appreciate you guys jumping on in. As always, we implore you to like, subscribe, review. Do not forget to review the podcast wherever you get your podcast: Spotify, Apple, Odyssey app. Did I mention Apple? And, of course, the 92 Through the Thin YouTube channel. We'll be back next week, as I said. But until then, enjoy a bye week. Less stress on your life that you don't have to watch Ohio State play. And, as always, go Bucks.